the Brooklyn Dodgers were founded a Major League Baseball team, active primarily in the National League from 1884 until 1957, after which the club moved to Los Angeles, California, where it continues its history as the Los Angeles Dodgers. The team moved west at the same time as its longtime rival, the New York Giants, also in the National League, relocated to San Francisco in Northern California as the San Francisco Giants. The team's name derived from the reputed skill of Brooklyn residents at evading the city's trolley streetcars. The name is a shortened form of their old name, the Brooklyn Trolley Dodgers. The Dodgers played in two stadiums in South Brooklyn, each named Washington Park, and at Eastern Park in the neighborhood of Brownsville before moving to Ebbets Field in the neighborhood of Crown Heights in 1913. The team is noted for signing Jackie Robinson in 1947 as the first black player in the modern major leagues. Many of the clubs represented at the first convention of the National Association of Baseball Players, the NABBP, were from Brooklyn, including the Atlantic, Eckford, and Excelsior clubs that combined to dominate play for most of the 1860s. Brooklyn helped make baseball commercial as the locale of the first paid admission games, a series of three all-star contests matching New York and Brooklyn in 1858. Brooklyn also featured the first two enclosed baseball grounds, the Union Grounds and the Capitoline Grounds. Enclosed dedicated ballparks accelerated the evolution from amateurism to professionalism. Despite the early success of Brooklyn clubs in the NABBP, which were officially amateur until 1869, they fielded weak teams in the succeeding National Association of Professional Baseball Players, the NAPBBP, the first professional league formed in 1871. The Excelsiors no longer challenged for the amateur championship after the Civil War and never entered the professional NAPBBP. The Eckfords and Atlantics declined to join until 1872 and thereby lost their best players. The Eckfords survived only one season and the Atlantics four, with losing teams. The National League replaced the NAPBBP in 1876 and granted exclusive territories to its eight members, excluding the Atlantics in favor of the Mutual Club of New York who had shared home grounds with the Atlantics. When the Mutuals were expelled by the league, the Hartford Club moved in, the press dubbing them the Brooklyn Hartfords, and played its home games at Union Grounds in 1877 before disbanding. The team currently known as the Dodgers was formed in 1883 by real estate magnate and baseball enthusiast Charles Byrne, who convinced his brother-in-law Joseph Doyle and casino operator Ferdinand Abel to start the team with him. Byrne arranged to build a grandstand on a lot bounded by 3rd Street, 4th Avenue, 5th Street, and 5th Avenue, and named it Washington Park in honor of first president George Washington. Nicknamed by reporters the Grays for their uniforms, the team played in the minor level Interstate Association of Professional Baseball Clubs that first season. Doyle became the first team manager, and they drew over 6,000 fans to their first home game on May 12, 1883 against the Trenton, New Jersey team. The Grays won the league title after the Camden Merritt Club in New Jersey disbanded on July 20th and Brooklyn picked up some of its better players. The Grays were invited to join the two-year-old professional circuit. The American Association founded 1882 to compete with the eight-year-old National League for the 1884 season. After winning the American Association League Championship in 1889, the Brooklyn club very occasionally now nicknamed the Brady Grooms or Grooms for six players having wed during the 1888 season moved to the competing older National League and won the 1890 NL Championship, being the only major league team to win consecutive championships in both professional baseball leagues. They lost the 1889 championship tournament to the New York Giants and tied the 1890 championship with Louisville.
Their success during this period was partly attributed to their having absorbed skilled players from the defunct AA New York Metropolitans and one-year players league entry Brooklyn Wards Wonders. The middle years of the decade were disappointing, a slump the Spalding guide rather primly ascribed to management tolerating drunkenness among the players. In 1899, most of the original old Baltimore Orioles and L stars from the legendary Maryland club which earlier won three consecutive championships were moved to the Grays by the ownership partner in both teams, Harry von der Horst, along with famed Orioles manager Ned Hanlon who became the club's new manager in New York slash Brooklyn under majority owner Charles Ebbets, who had by now accumulated an 80% share of the club. The new combined team was dubbed the Brooklyn Superbus by the press inspired by the popular circus act the Hanlon's Superbu and would become the champions of the National League in 1899 and again in 1900. The name Brooklyn Trolley Dodgers was first used to describe the team in 1895. The nickname was still new enough in September 1895 that a newspaper reported that Trolley Dodgers is the new name which Eastern baseball cranks have given the Brooklyn club. In 1895, Brooklyn played at Eastern Park, bounded by Eastern Parkway, now Pitkin Avenue, Powell Street, Sutter Avenue, Vincindoran Street, where they had moved early in the 1891 season when the second Washington Park burned down. Some sources erroneously report that the name Trolley Dodgers referred to pedestrians avoiding fast cars on streetcar tracks that bordered Eastern Park on two sides. However, Eastern Park was not bordered by street-level trolley lines that had to be dodged by pedestrians. The name Trolley Dodgers implied the dangers posed by trolley cars in Brooklyn generally, which in 1892 began the switch from horsepower to electrical power, which made them much faster, and were hence regarded as more dangerous. The name was later shortened to Brooklyn Dodgers. Other team names used to refer to the franchise that finally came to be called the Dodgers were the Atlantics in 1884 not directly related to the earlier Brooklyn Atlantics, pretty grooms or grooms from 1888 through 1898, Ward's Wonders, the Superbus from 1899 through 1910 and the Robins 1914 through 1931. All of these nicknames were used by fans and newspaper sports writers to describe the team, often concurrently, but not in any official capacity. The team's legal name was the Brooklyn Baseball Club. However, the Trolley Dodgers nickname was used throughout this period, along with other nicknames by fans and sports writers of the day. The team did not use the name in a formal sense until 1916, when the name was printed on Home World Series programs. The word Dodgers finally appeared on team jerseys in 1932. The conclusive shift came in 1933, when both home and road jerseys for the team bore the name Dodgers. Examples of how the many popularized names of the team were used interchangeably are available from newspaper articles from the period before 1932. A New York Times article describing a game the Dodgers played in 1916 starts out by referring to how Jimmy Callahan, pilot of the Pirates, did his best to wreck the hopes the Dodgers have of gaining the National League pennant, but then goes on to comment, the only thing that saved the Superbus from being toppled from first place was that the Phillies lost one of the two games played 19. Most baseball statistics sites and baseball historians generally now refer to the pennant winning 1916 Brooklyn team as the Robins. On the other hand, the Brooklyn Daily Eagle used Superbus in its box scores that season. A 1918 New York Times article used the nickname Robins in its title Buccaneers take last from Robins, but the subtitle of the article reads Subdue the Superbus by 11 to 4, making series an even break 2021. Space conscious headline writers still used the flock derived from Robins during the Dodgers last decade in Brooklyn 22. Another example of the interchangeability of different nicknames is found on the program issued at Ebbets Field for the 1920 World Series, which identifies the matchup in the series as Dodgers vs. 
Indians despite the fact that the Robins nickname had been in consistent usage at this point for around six years. The historic and heated rivalry between the Dodgers and the Giants is more than a century old. It began when the Dodgers and Giants faced each other in the 1889 World Series, the ancestor of the Subway Series, and both played in separate neighboring cities. Brooklyn and New York were separate cities until 1898 when they became neighboring boroughs of the newly expanded New York City. When both franchises moved to California after the 1957 season, the rivalry was easily transplanted, as the cities of Los Angeles and San Francisco have long been economic, political, and cultural rivals, representative of the broader Southern and Northern California divide. Manager Wilbert Robinson, another former Oriole, popularly known as Uncle Robbie, restored the Brooklyn team to respectability. His Brooklyn Robins reached the 1916 and 1920 World Series, losing both but contending perennially for several seasons. Charles Ebbets and Ed McKeever died within a week of each other in 1925, and Robbie was named president while still field manager. Upon assuming the title of president, however, Robinson's ability to focus on the field declined, and the teams of the late 1920s were often fondly referred to as the Daffinus Boys for their distracted, error-ridden style of play. After his removal as club president, Robinson returned to managing, and the club's performance rebounded somewhat. When Robinson retired in 1931, he was replaced as manager by Max Carey. Although some suggested renaming the Robins, the Brooklyn Canaries, after Kerry, whose last name was originally Carnarius, the name Brooklyn Dodgers, returned to stay following Robinson's retirement. It was during this era that Willard Mullin, a noted sports cartoonist, fixed the Brooklyn team with the lovable nickname of Dem Bums. After hearing his cab driver ask, so how did those bums do today? Mullen decided to sketch an exaggerated version of famed circus clown Emmett Kelly to represent the Dodgers in his much-praised cartoons in the New York World Telegram. Both image and nickname cut on, so much so that many a Dodger yearbook cover, from 1951 through 1957, featured a Willard Mullen illustration of the Brooklyn bum. Perhaps the highlight of the Daffinus Boys era came after Wilbert Robinson left the dugout. In 1934, Giants player manager Bill Terry was asked about the Dodgers' chances in the coming pennant race and cracked infamously, is Brooklyn still in the league? Managed then by Casey Stengel, who played for the Dodgers in the 1910s and went on to greatness managing the New York Yankees, the 1934 Dodgers were determined to make their presence felt. As it happened, the season entered its final games with the Giants tied with the St. Louis Cardinals for the pennant, with the Giants' remaining games against the Dodgers. Stengel led his bums to the polo grounds for the showdown, and they beat the Giants twice to knock them out of the pennant race. The Gash House Gang Cardinals nailed the pennant by beating the Cincinnati Reds those same two days. One key development during this era was the 1938 appointment of Leland Larry McPhail as Dodgers general manager. McPhail, who brought night games to Major League Baseball as general manager of the Reds, also started night baseball in Brooklyn and ordered the successful refurbishing of Ebbets Field. He also brought Red's voice Red Barber to Brooklyn as the Dodgers' lead announcer in 1939, just after McPhail broke the New York Baseball Executive's agreement to ban live baseball broadcasts enacted because of the fear of the effect of radio calls on the home team's attendance. McPhail remained with the Dodgers until 1942 when he returned to the armed forces for World War II. He later became one of the Yankees' co-owners, bidding unsuccessfully for Barber to join him in the Bronx as announcer. The first Major League Baseball game to be televised was Brooklyn's 6-1 victory over Cincinnati at Ebbets Field on August 26, 1939. Batting helmets were introduced to Major League Baseball by the Dodgers in 1941.
for most of the first half of the 20th century, no Major League Baseball team employed a black player. A parallel system of Negro Leagues developed, but most of the Negro League players were denied a chance to prove their skill before a national audience. Jackie Robinson became the first African American to play Major League Baseball in the 20th century when he played his first Major League game on April 15, 1947 as a member of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Robinson's entry into the league was mainly due to general manager Branch Rickey's efforts. The deeply religious Rickey's motivation appears to have been primarily moral, although business considerations were also present. Ricky was a member of the Methodist Church, the antecedent denomination to the United Methodist Church of today, which was a strong advocate for social justice and active later in the civil rights movement. Ricky saw his opportunity with the 1944 death of Commissioner Kennesaw Mountain Landis, an arch-segregationist and enforcer of the color barrier. Besides selecting Robinson for his exceptional baseball skills, Ricky also considered Robinson's outstanding personal character, his UCLA education and rank of captain in the U.S. Army in his decision, since he knew that boos, taunts, and criticism were going to be directed at Robinson, and that Robinson had to be tough enough to withstand abuse without attempting to retaliate. The inclusion of Robinson on the team also led the Dodgers to move its spring training site. Prior to 1946, the Dodgers held their spring training in Jacksonville, Florida. However, the city's stadium refused to host an exhibition game with the Montreal Royals, the Dodgers' own farm club on whose roster Robinson appeared at the time, citing segregation laws. Nearby Sanford similarly declined. Ultimately, City Island Ballpark in Daytona Beach agreed to host the game with Robinson on the field. The team traveled to Havana, Cuba for spring training in 1947, this time with Robinson on the big club. Although the Dodgers ultimately built Dodger Town and its Hallman Stadium further south in Vero Beach and played there for 61 spring training seasons from 1948 through 2008, Daytona Beach renamed City Island Ballpark to Jackie Robinson Ballpark in his honor. This event marked the continuation of the integration of professional sports in the United States, with professional football having led the way in 1946 with the concomitant demise of the Negro Leagues, and is regarded as a key moment in the history of the American Civil Rights Movement. Robinson was an exceptional player, a speedy runner who sparked the team with his intensity. He was the inaugural recipient of the Rookie of the Year Award, which is now named the Jackie Robinson Award in his honor. The Dodgers' willingness to integrate when most other teams refused was a key factor in their success. They won six pennants in those ten years with the help of Robinson, three-time MVP Roy Campanella, Cy Young Award winner Don Newcomb, Jim Gilliam, and Joe after the wilderness years of the 1920s and 1930s, the Dodgers were rebuilt into a contending club first by general manager Larry McPhail and then the legendary Branch Rickey. Led by Jackie Robinson, Pee Wee Reese and Gil Hodges in the infield, Duke Snyder and Carl Ferrillo in the outfield, Roy Campanella behind the plate, and Don Newcomb, Carl Erskine, and Preacher Rowe on the pitcher's mound, the Dodgers won pennants in 41, 47, 49, 52, and 53, only to fall to the New York Yankees in all five of the subsequent World Series. The annual ritual of building excitement, followed in the end by disappointment, became a common pattern to the long-suffering fans, and wait till next year, became an unofficial Dodger slogan. While the Dodgers generally enjoyed success during this period, in 1951 they fell victim to one of the largest collapses in the history of baseball. On August 11, 1951, Brooklyn led the National League by an enormous 13 and a half games over their arch rivals, the Giants. While the Dodgers went 26 and 22 from that time until the end of the season, the Giants went on an absolute tear, winning an amazing 37 of their last 44 games, including their last seven in a row. 
At the end of the season the Dodgers and the Giants were tied for first place, forcing a three-game playoff for the pennant. The Giants took Game 1 before being shut out by the Dodgers, Clem Labini in Game 2. It all came down to the final game, and Brooklyn seemed to have the pennant locked up, holding a lead in the bottom of the ninth inning. Giants outfielder Bobby Thompson, however, hit a stunning three-run walk-off home run off the Dodgers, Ralph Branca to secure the National League Championship for New York. To this day Thompson's home run is known as the shot heard round the world. In 1955, by which time the core of the Dodger team was beginning to age, next year finally came. The fabled boys of summer shot down the Bronx Bombers in seven games led by the first-class pitching of young left-hander Johnny Potters, whose key pitch was a chain cup known as pulling down the lampshade because of the arm motion used right when the ball was released. Potters won two series games, including the deciding seventh. The turning point of Game 7 was a spectacular double play that began with left fielder Sandy Emmeres running down Yogi Berra's long fly ball, then throwing to shortstop Pee Wee Reese, who relayed to first baseman Gil Hodges to double up a surprise Gil McDougal to preserve the Dodger lead. Hank Bauer grounded out and the Dodgers won 2-0. Although the Dodgers lost the World Series to the Yankees in 1956 during which the Yankees pitcher Don Larson pitched the only World Series perfect game in baseball history and the only postseason no-hitter for the next 54 years, it hardly seemed to matter. Brooklyn fans had their memory of triumph, and soon that was all they were left with. Real estate businessman Walter Amelie had acquired majority ownership of the Dodgers in 1950 when he bought Ricky's 25% share of the team and secured the support of the widow of another equal partner, John L. Smith. Soon Amelie was working to buy new land in Brooklyn for a new, more accessible and better ballpark than Ebbets Field. Beloved as it was, Ebbets Field had grown old and was not well served by infrastructure to the point where the Dodgers could not sell out the park to maximum capacity even in the heat of a pennant race despite dominating the lead from 46 to 57. New York City construction coordinator Robert Moses, however, sought to force Amelie into using a site in Flushing Meadows, Queens the eventual location of Shea Stadium, the home of the future New York Mets. Moses' vision involved a city-built, city-owned park, which was greatly at odds with Amelie's real estate savvy. When Amelie realized that he was not going to be allowed to buy a suitable parcel of land in Brooklyn, he began thinking of team relocation. Amelie was free to purchase land of his own choosing but wanted Robert Moses to condemn one parcel of land along the Atlantic Railroad yards in downtown Brooklyn under Title I authority, after Amelie had bought the bulk of the land he had in mind. Title I gave the city municipality power to condemn land for the purpose of building what it calls public purpose projects. Moses' interpretation of public purpose included public parks, public housing and public highways and bridges. What Amelie wanted was for Moses to use Title I authority rather than to pay market value for the land. With Title I the city via Robert Moses could have sold the land to Amelie at a below market price. Moses refused to honor Amelie's request and responded, If you want the land so bad, why don't you purchase it with your own money? Meanwhile, non-stop transcontinental airline travel had become routine during the years since the Second World War, and teams were no longer bound by much slower railroad timetables. Because of civil aviation advances, it became possible to locate teams farther apart as far west as California while maintaining the same busy game schedules. When Los Angeles officials attended the 1956 World Series looking to entice a team to move there, they were not even thinking of the Dodgers. Their original target had been the Washington Senators franchise, which eventually moved to Bloomington, Minnesota to become the Minnesota Twins in 1961. 
At the same time, Amelie was looking for a contingency in case Moses and other New York politicians refused to let him build the Brooklyn Stadium he wanted, and sent word to the Los Angeles officials that he was interested in talking. Los Angeles offered him what New York did not, a chance to buy land suitable for building a ballpark, and owned that ballpark giving him complete control over all its revenue streams. At the same time, the National League was not willing to approve the Dodgers' move unless Amelie found a second team willing to join them out west, largely out of concern for travel costs. Meanwhile, Giants owner Horace Stoneham was having similar difficulty finding a replacement for his team's antiquated home stadium, the Polo Grounds. Stoneham was considering moving the Giants to Minneapolis but was persuaded instead to move them to San Francisco, ensuring that the Dodgers had a National League rival closer than St. Louis. So the two arch-rival teams, the Dodgers and Giants, moved out to the West Coast together after the 1957 season. The Brooklyn Dodgers played their final game at Ebbets Field on September 24, 1957, which the Dodgers won over the Pittsburgh Pirates. On April 18, 1958, the Los Angeles Dodgers played their first game in L.A., defeating the former New York and newly relocated and renamed San Francisco Giants before 78,000 fans at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum.